got an exciting video for you today. This week got a super package of three Calatheas. They are the Calathea Ecuadoriana, the Ben and Hecai, and the Louise. And so I'm very excited to unbox them, to pot them with you. And then finally, I will show you uh, where they're going to live in my home. I am resurrecting my plant room right now. It looks a little bit like a Calathea forest. So you're gonna get the chance to see my Ecuadoriana right up against a Sabrina, right up against a Barsavitzii. We're gonna get to see some of those similarities and how the Calathea is one of those plants whose species can easily um, hybridize in the wild and so or in a nursery so I want to share that with you too so let's get started and so the box arrived and it felt nice and cool and the shop I got these from is the Mystic Oasis on Etsy and the seller was great I was really able to work with her and make sure that I got healthy happy plants and they have arrived there are three in the box so the first one that I'm pulling out is the Louise, and I have never had one of these Calatheas before. Now, I'm very aware of them. I've seen a lot of photos. Here's another Ecuadoriana, and then the Ben and Hecai is coming. Um, I've seen a lot of photos of them, and they've just always been kind of those uh, plants for me. I know that they've been, you know, they make up a lot of different hybrids. You can see how happy I am with my hand movements. Um, but I didn't anticipate in person just how beautiful this plant would be and what I'd been missing out on. Sometimes picture, pictures just don't do plants justice and I was so happy. Now the Ecuadoriana I think is just, oh my gosh, it is such an incredibly beautiful plant. So it, I have to say it looks amazing in pictures and it, it does look even better in real life. It is I can't even explain it to you. It feels like a Calathea, but also like some type of really crazy aeroid at the same time. Um, I feel like the Calathea was like, oh, watch me, I can do that too. But my Van and Heck Eye looks good. You can see me doing my kind of hand fluttering, um, my excitement. And completely blown away by this Louise. Look at this plant. Oh, just so beautiful. Yeah, you can see me pointing at the Louise. I'm, I'm very excited about it. Again, a very simple looking plant, but here is the nursery pot. So this is how I'm potting a little bit differently. Instead of putting these into a glazed ceramic, which is what I would usually do, I'm gonna be potting these in nursery pots and then using decorative pots. Now, Cheryl at Free Range Diva and I have on and off talked about this and I kept saying, I'm gonna try it, I'm gonna try it, and now I'm trying it. So Cheryl, you can see I'm giving it a shot to see how it goes. Um, thankfully, I was able to get nursery pots uh, pretty easily as well as I already had some decorative pots. They might look familiar to you, so uh, I'm definitely sizing them up though. I'm thinking for the Ecuadoriana and the Louise, I'm on, you know, I'm thinking the six inch pot works really well and the root balls of these plants already I can tell are a little bit smaller and Calatheas do have more delicate root systems. They're not usually like really robust, thick large root systems, given the size of the plants, right, in terms of the proportion to the plant itself. Now I am using a full coffee, half of a coffee filter at the bottom here, and that's that might be more habit than anything these days, but it does help me. I just put a little water on it, and it, that seals it to the bottom, and then I can get soil in it, and I don't worry about it dripping out. Now, I don't know that that's a real concern, um, it's just, I, like I said, I think it's more habit than anything else these days. I'm starting with the Vanden Hecai, and I decided on an eight inch pot for this. Um, it has a larger root system, and it's definitely the largest of the three plants. And I think that this will work really well for it. I'm not gonna fuss with the roots much. Uh, I tend not to do that unless I need to get something off of the roots. So I'm gonna leave those as they are and just get this thing potted up. You can't see much with the angle, so I'm not gonna show much footage here because you're not gonna be able to see anything anyway, uh, except for this really large piece of, I'm pretty sure that that is pumice. I was able to break it up. But I'm gonna water it, and as I water it, I'll turn it just to make sure that I'm getting all of the soil evenly moist throughout the pot. 
And the, the roots on the plants were moist and in really good shape. And they had, as you can see, sphagnum moss and they, they just, they did really, really well. I tried to center the plant, but that stem kind of threw me off a little bit. Rhizomes, of course, that's how we usually would propagate. I, I say usually, that's how you propagate calathea for the most part. I don't really know of too many people growing them from the seeds on the flowers. I've never actually heard of anyone doing that. Now, growing from rhizomes, I've certainly heard about that. And so for the calathea, it's going to need room in its pot to horizontally extend rhizomes out. And that is where new growth and plantlets come from. And that's usually when we divide the calathea, we're dividing the rhizomes of the plant. And I think that the six inch pot is gonna be enough if it wants to shoot out a rhizome. Uh, I don't know that it will though. Um, I'm not sure how they're going to adjust in my home. And I'm not sure then how robust the growth will be until maybe next spring. And again, the Louisa is a beautiful plant. It's gorgeous, I, but I think the root system, I think it, a six inch pot is a good idea. Now, I'm not afraid to put my calatheas, like say in this eight inch pot, you know, knock on wood, I've, I've had enough luck with the watering that it doesn't concern me putting them in these pots, but I just, I don't think it makes a ton of sense. So I'm gonna put it into the six inch pot and see what happens. And I think it's gonna have enough room on all sides that if it wants to shoot that horizontal rhizome out under the soil, it's gonna have room to do that. But that is something to keep in mind with calathea that especially if you get a younger calathea and you want it, you wanna see that growth, you wanna see it mature into a larger plant, usually what you're wanting is additional rhizomes to grow. And so just keep that in mind. They don't need a ton of room, but they do grow. The rhizomes come out horizontally from existing, from the existing root ball. Oh, this Louise, I am telling you, is just an unbelievably beautiful plant. And I can't believe that I've never had one before. So I've got them all together over here. This is usually my welcome to my home area of my house, um, but they're gonna go straight in the plant room. I am feeling, I might be feeling way too confident right now. Um, here's my distiller. I'm distilling water. I'm always distilling water, dutifully distilling water for these plants. Um, but my, my neem oil soil drench has been a game changer. And so I'm not afraid to just move these plants into my plant room after making sure that I visually don't see anything. And you, again, you might recognize these pots. These are the Ikea pots that I got. They got them for an incredible deal. And I think they're really beautiful. I didn't end up drilling holes in the bottom. I just left them as is and I dropped those nursery pots in. And I am so pleased with how they turned out. It's just a really good contrast. So I did get a comment saying that these, these pots are amazing and they don't detract from the plants and they're just the perfect kind of compliment. And you are 100% right. Uh, I'm very happy with how these look. The green against, and of course, you know, with the calathea, the petioles being these beautiful red and burgundy and purple colors, it is just, oh, beautiful. This is my elusive cat you've never seen before. Um, she is a great cat, she's a special needs cat. We got her as a kitten. She had been mauled and thrown over our fence. And as she's gotten older, she's nice and healthy. She does have some challenges when it comes to mobility. And so she's not able to groom herself. And as she's gotten older, she gets really upset when we groom her. Uh, but when a professional does it, she gets much happier. So the vet said, why don't we just clip her once a year and that'll keep her nice and healthy and groomed and she loves it. So anytime she gets clipped, she likes to come out and show it off a little bit more than usual. So this is, I bought this as a Maui queen. It is not a Maui queen. I don't know, I think it might be a misto. If anybody has any idea, please leave me a comment. This is one of its newest leaves, but I'm showing you this because I feel like it looks a little bit like my Louise. Um, and this is one of the more mature leaves that it has and it's actually starting to brown up and will probably fall off. But I've got my Louise here pretty close by and you can see that 
the variegation through the center of the leaf is quite different. Oh, it's so beautiful. And then there's my Sabrina, which I bought as just like, oh, I mean, it was a plant let essentially. It was just a tiny, tiny little thing. And then the two Ecuadorianas I've got are behind it. And you can see, I guess, a little bit of why they call the Ecuadoriana a red Sabrina from looking at this. Um, I can see a bit of the similarities, but the leaves on the my Zabrina are just now starting to mature and to get more texture and indentation where you see that kind of variegation. And my Varsha Vitsii has put out a new rhizome that you can see, but every leaf on it has humidity damage on the tip. Some a little bit, some a lot. It just came back into the plant room about a week ago. And what is this? This is not a Tetrasperma. I don't know what it is, but you can see the Vanden Hecai over here is kind of tucked away by, I think that's a Sandariana and a White Star and a Rufibarba over on the far side of the room. And then there is an Ender story here. So Princess Jessie, um, my Makoyana, my Fukata, and my Fusion White, and my Musaica even is down there as well. But this is that, that kind of Ender story level. Right now, you can see that the humidity is at 50% in the room and it's just under 76 degrees. And I'm actually going to need to probably kick the humidifier on in a moment. Here's my white fusion, or my fusion white, a little bit more closer up. Uh, people have asked about how it's doing since I did the humidity recovery video and it's doing pretty well. Uh, the Zabrina is doing all right. It's been a difficult transition into a juvenile plant from a plantlet. And the Ecuadorianas already had new growth when I got them. Everything's looking pretty good, but you can see just being in here, the temperature's gone up and the humidity's gone down. And I don't like the humidity to get below 50%, so you can see I'm gonna kick the humidifier on now and I'm probably gonna get it up to 60 or so percent. But also, I dropped my Picturata Crimson. Yeah, it broke two of the newest like pieces of growth. My Cora is like, oh, just amazing and one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen. I am so happy with this plant. I actually want to do a video for you about this plant and the Illustrious and kind of their connection. But you can see the understory, the Makayana leaf down there poking out between the Varshavitsii plantlets here. My Pothos and Joy wants to be right up against the window. It's finally started growing. Thank you to everybody for your tips on that. My rosies are doing good, but I want to do want to talk about my white tiger and my um, fusion white with you in a little bit more detail coming up soon. If there's any of these plants that you would like to see me talk about in more detail, let me know. This is my halo. Oh, I love this plant so much. But yeah, if there's anything that you would like to see me talk about in a little bit more detail that you see in here that I haven't mentioned, just let me know. But I'm really happy with how everything's looking. Uh, all of the plants basically have a little bit of humidity stress. Everybody's going to have kind of crispy tips and it's just going to be that way until I can get things settled. But I hope you've enjoyed the video today and until next time, be well and take care.